Oh, and it looks like DV6 is live. You must have just ended. Six, you there? Yeah, I was going to walk over and talk to you for a minute. Okay, well, Frosty, myself, and Oink are in the pre-show right now, so. Oh, shit. All right, yeah, we do it to catch it up since I'm alive. Um, yeah, why don't I do that? Stand by. I don't know, did any of you understand what he said? Oh, Marquis done. Yay, Marquis finished running his mouth. All right, go ahead, hit me. I can't hit you. You're in front of my house in the camper. <laughs> I said that I cannot hit you. You're in the camper in front of my house. You know, when I come down here, I don't need Martha. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Six. We still love you. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight. Uh, do you have any salty balls over there? Chocolate salty balls, for that matter? You saying I need to make cookies? Well, I know what we can do to start off the show, right? Right during the pre-show. This is what we can do. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me? There oh we go. God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this, everybody, is the pre-show before Barracks Talk live every Saturday night, 2100, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I mean, I already talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to go live. Mutation. Mutation. Let it out now. Man, I gotta go to San Francisco. I need to take the shit. I get muted. Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DB Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DB Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Let's get it started. In here. <laughs> Get this party started on a Saturday night. I'm on a highway to hell. All night long. Because I got friends in all places where. Online and on the go on your mobile device. This is discussion is advised. This is Barrack Talk. It's DV Radio. Google broke the toilet. And I think I just broke my desk. <laughs> Tonight, Google is planning on taking over the world. <laughs> You can dip Brussels sprouts in chocolate to make them look like cake pops. $15 is a little steep for a bag of dicks. It should be like $14.99. I'm pretty easy to please. Not even one touch it as much as I want to. Are you sure? And we just <laughs> went there. Boom, 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 boom. Because <laughs> this is how it is on TV radio. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, you listen to the podcast there, young man. You're tuned in to WDVR on DVRadio.net or by searching DV Radio on the free Live 365 app on your mobile device. Because this is how it is on DV Radio. That is how it is on WDVR, DVRadio.net. This is Barrett's Talk. We're live or you're listening to us on podcast. It's not Saturday. After 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm Bonerwood. We've got Oink, DD6, Frosty, Recoil couldn't make it because he has some family stuff to get ready for for uh, tomorrow or, or something. Uh, Google doesn't feel well, but we do have a special guest uh, coming on tonight, and uh, hopefully you'll all enjoy it. It is August 17, 2019. How's everyone doing this fine evening? Fantabulous. Second. Just great. Just, just I'm D six, and you're not. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we do have some stuff to get through tonight. Uh, DB six has some stuff to tell all you that uh, if you listen to his live video uh, 
couple minutes ago, then you know that you had to tune in to hear the rest because not even. Oh, what us. page was the live video on? Because it's like fifteen thousand pages now. <laughs> uh, that one that that dumbass is on that looks like he's dead. Um, veteran <laughs> humor. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we'll hear about that here in a minute. Um. We have to talk about the return of the Marquee Dirty 30, which aired tonight at its new time, 8 o'clock. Welcome back. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Did welcome it, back. It and welcome back to our chocolatey sexual goodness. Am I, am I supposed to be here? Is, is this thing on? In <laughs> honor of you, I'm having chocolate ice cream. <laughs> That's racist. I know. <laughs> Everything I do is racist. You better believe it. Yeah. Well, I thought you won't let me come visit you at your house. I told you I have plenty of room now you can come. I've showed you the room that you can come and park your ugly RV. (laughs) (laughs) I'm coming now. (laughs) Hey, I just fried some pork chops. Come on. Come on now. He fried some pork chops. I made fried chicken. (laughs) I did. Whatever. Anyhow. I had some chicken tenders and a hamburger steak plate. And it was right, good. You. You're next. This is your moment. Ah, oh, fuck. I probably picked one. This shouldn't be a good time to eat ice cream. Hold on. Probably not. <laughs> well, it's taking so long. Um, mm. All right. Let's get everybody caught up. If you're listening to this show, I'm going to assume you follow the pages, which I am on the same page as you, is when you say, there are a lot of fucking DB pages now. What's going on? Look, we've got a closed group, which you guys have been begging for, for how long, Bo? Since since this, the, since you've been around, right? Yes. It, it should make this a closed group. Well, prior to us losing the big page or being censored, uh, we had started that closed group. And, uh, Oh, fuck, hold on. So we had that one, and then we had the open page. And then when they took the open page away, I was going to convert. I let it be known that that veteran humor page actually was the DV page backup. Which, funny story about that is, did you know that while that page was being uh, groomed or, you know, maintained in order to be a backup, I used to get hater, uh, not hater, what, what did you say? I'd post the same stuff you, I would on DV. And uh, I'd get people come over there. Oh, man, I'd share stuff from DV. Well, fuck DV, man. Man, they post lame shit. And rah, rah. It's like, oh, really? Tell me more. <laughs> it's the same thing, man. This page is so much better, different than DV. Really? How so? Well, oh, you post good. You, you're not embarrassing us. And rah, rah. You know, uh, what, what was it? I'm like, guy, it's the same. Like, I didn't tell him I'm this, it's the same guy running it, but it was just always, I thought it was funny as fuck when people would come yell at me about the other page that I ran, but didn't know yeah. I ran that. I love that. Cause for the longest of uh, time, six and myself were just back here on the back side of the pages, just <laughs> laughing our asses off every day, every single day. It was just a proof that there's nothing different than all these other social media pages out there. You know, everybody posts the same memes and stuff. But oh my god, trick or trick or trick or trick or Hey, we're not gonna have a trick or treat. We're gonna have trigger treat. <laughs> trigger treat. <laughs> oh, there's a good parody satire for this Halloween. Tr- <laughs> trigger treat. Uh, and, oh, so uh, I I had digressed. So we have all these pages, but I did a live video. And what I said was, I left. I've been on the road now two weeks. The first week was I was in New Hampshire, but I've been living in this fucking camper for two weeks um, and running back and forth to the farm. I was only like a half hour away. Um, but the last few days here, uh, since I got to, I got here, what, Tuesday, Bo? No, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, I forgot that day. And uh, I was okay. I was okay a little bit. I told him. Uh, it's hard to tell Bo like how bad you're doing because <laughs> Bo is doing a lot worse than all of us. But uh, but I did because I don't give a fuck. I got to tell somebody. 
and I'll right. listen. I actually fucking sit here and listen. <laughs> yeah, you're a good listener. I mean, you can't run away because you're crippled. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but it's just been really bad the last two days. I've just been bedridden. Um, and uh, today I finally forced. I, I got up. I started to feel a little better. In the last few hours, I'm getting even. I'm feel a hundred percent better. So I'm gonna get caught up on work. And I was explaining to everybody that. That coupled that with my health going up and down. That happened while I was on the camping trip too, or that first week, um, where I was on the road up in New Hampshire, and uh, it's brutal. It's brutal. It's like, uh, and I'm having problems with the VA. The meds aren't working anymore. And, but then also, I'm dealing with Facebook banning me. So the lack of posts are due to the, me being, you know, not posting because I'm fucking in bed, crying, whining, bitching. And Facebook banning me. They're still banning me for the shit on the clothes group or um, on the page that's gone. I'm still getting banned. My accounts are getting locked out because it's not my posted two years ago. That was acceptable two years ago, but the goalposts have moved. So the page you can no longer see anymore. I'm still getting banned for it. Yeah, um, they don't have a, gla- a grandfather clause whatsoever with inside yeah, their community standards. Speech, yeah. Well, go back and ban Tom Huckleberry Finn, whatever. Anyhow, um, so it, I've, it's, it's, look, we've been posting once an hour for, for since the page started, very shortly thereafter. You know, we've kept that page active. Then I started slowing down on the overnights because, uh, I just didn't want people to think there was somebody there, you know, and then reach out and, you know, for emergency or something. But now it's to the point where I'm only going to post a few, a couple times a day. Because the more I post, the more I'm leaving myself liable to be in band. And we've already seen what happened with that. So, and also we have all these different pages. So we have the dysfun- the, the new DV page, which is Dysfunctional Veterans DV, which has 19,000 followers. And then we have Veteran Humor with over 300,000, which they won't let grow and they won't let us change the name. And then we have the Close Group. And also there's DV Radio, DV Farm, and all the affiliates, you know, with DV. So I'm really trying to wrap myself around my head around like, what am I going to do? The closed group is a different beast. That's just for the vets and active duty, but the vet humor and DV dysfunctional veterans or whatever, you know, dysfunctional veterans, DV, those are one and the same. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. Um, so I mean, I can go over to vet humor and go, Hey, Hey, you know, we got the real page over here. It's too much work to leave this page and go over there and like it. Okay, I understand. So, uh, but anyhow, that's where we're at. And I'm on the road uh, to attend this for uh, this fundraiser, this awesome fundraiser out in Colorado Springs, uh, hosted by Disgruntled Vets and a few other people. And they're a benefit. It's to benefit the homeless vets at DV Farm and 22 until nine. So I really am. I haven't seen Chappie in a few years. I'm going to be out there in Colorado Springs for a week. Um, so if you're in that area, please go sign up for the event. Um, there's, there's still plenty of tickets available. It's in a, can hold over a thousand, two, three thousand people. Uh, we want to pack it in. There's going to be live bands, events, um, and stuff like that. I'm bringing Captain Cardboard. We're going to raffle off the guitar. I've got the shock collar, so I'll be up on stage. They're going to shock me to raise money for the vet farm and stuff. So I look forward to being there. Um, and then, of course, I don't know. Along the way, we're going to have fun. I wanted to do more live videos along the way and meet up with you guys and do some live videos with you. So look forward to doing that. Right now, I'm currently um, I'm taking over Bo's front yard. I'm trying to be respectful, but you know, that was 11 Bravo and we kind of spread out when we park and, uh, I'm, it's got a little bit of creep going on. I got my barbecue grill over there on the side. I got some flies on the right. His dogs come and visit me every day because they know I got the good treats. So, oh man, Yogi, they got this. What, what kind of dog is Yogi? Uh, Part pit lab mutt mix. Well, he's a sweetheart. Boy, he saw me and went nuts. Daisy did too. But he's got some sharp nails. And he just jump on me and wrap his paws around my neck and go, I could kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's good to be back, Bo. 
It's like I, I, I this is the most we've talked in person and online. I, I mean, I don't have time online anymore. Uh, yeah, we like- we honestly haven't had a real conversation in almost a full month now until you showed up here because we've yeah. been we've all been run ragged. But I like I like coming down here. The people still remember. I go listen, folks. I go to Walmart. I haven't. When was the last time I was down here? Four months ago? Five months ago? Give or take. Yeah, I mean, since you did that, the the update on his room when it was still being constructed, right? Yeah, it was still under construction. That was in the winter. Um, that's right. It was winter time. So, I go into Walmart, and there are people go, "Oh, you're back! We missed the bird!" <laughs> like, holy fuck! You remember me from last winter? Everywhere I went, it's pretty good. The truck stop, of course, Bo, the one down the street from Bo's house, they know me there well. So. But going into town, it's like people are like, oh, he's back. Yeah, somebody got a parking card last time I was there. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, to recap, all right, there's changes coming down. Don't forget, too, we got a bunch of shit at the DV store, mydvstore.com. You can get two T-shirts for 10 bucks. We just need your size. We pick what shirt you're going to get. I mean, how DB can that be? We got a bunch of uh, 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 shirts, but we don't have complete sets of, you know, from small to uh, tent size. So we got all these things. We're trying to, you know, empty out the warehouse so we can do another big shipment. Uh, so we got a lot of mixed match stuff. So if you give us your size and 10 bucks, we'll give you two DB t-shirts. And according to the website, there's still hoodies available for eight bucks uh, and hats for eight bucks and stuff. So go do it. Go do it. And keep up the birthday fundraisers. Uh, that DB farm, you know, without it, uh, you know, those vets that are there, listen, the vets were helping pretty much wouldn't get help anywhere else. Um, yeah. So I like the work we're doing out there, you know, but if, if so keep up the support. I mean, I really do need to find time to figure out how to do grants, but. For now, just keep the donations coming. I can't afford to fund much more out of my pocket, but you know, we're still there and we're still full, uh, and, and the program's working. A lot of good work goes on out there. And that's it. It's, I think as, as uh, the show progresses, though, I'm sure more will come out. So, Oh, and one other thing. As a DV, I'm an asshole. I love fucking going, you know, back in New Hampshire, one of my favorite things was in August. I love walking, as you're walking out the door, when they're saying goodbye or thanks for coming or whatever. I go, hey, don't, don't just think, a couple more weeks. And they go, a couple more weeks, what? Be Christmas music in stores. And then you walk out the door and you listen to them inside yelling and screaming, what the fuck? No. Oh, my God. It's too soon. But it's true. Yep. A couple more weeks. You're gonna hear Christmas music in stores. <laughs> Shit, they had they had Halloween stuff out during Fourth of July. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So And that is the D V minute. The D V minute. <laughs> That's a long ass fucking minute. I hate to see your hours. Yeah. Yeah. So um how has the uh, road trip been other than, you know, people being nice, obviously? Well, there was one scary instance on the highway where people love it. There was a lot of traffic jams, a lot of accidents. But uh, I love how, like, you're you're behind a car. You're in the slow lane where I belong. And uh, somebody will get in front of me. And there's plenty of room in front of them. Everybody stopped up ahead. I've got a downshift, but you slam on your brakes, even though you've got a couple hundred feet to close the gap. But you're going to make me. I get. Um, I've almost rear-ended so many fucking people getting in front of me, and then they see everybody breaking up ahead, so they slam on their fucking brakes. What a half a mile distance to go. Oh, it pisses me off. I can hear DV6 going. That fucking guy. <laughs> 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 oh my god but I'm, I'm glad to see you're actually able to 
take a round trip trip this time instead of coming down and having to leave because of some bullshit. Don't you fucking jinx it. <laughs> well, at least at least we got the show started off right during the pre-show. Oh my god. The new sign on the truck. Danger attack parrot. <laughs> that fucking shit is the shit on the road. So I how keep, how many I, weird I was gonna say how many weird looks have you gotten because of that sign? Well, this kid at the grocery store summed it up best. He was like fifteen pushing carts and he goes, You know, when I first saw that I'm like I'm looking in the truck, I'm expecting this big giant bird and this little yellow bird flies through the window, tiny thing. <laughs> Danger attack bird and it's just a little tiny bird. He nice. says, that's funny. I go, you know, I never thought about that. That is kind of funny. Just close your eyes out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll still get the ones. Can I still pat her? Can I still pat her? <laughs> well, at least they're nice about asking you instead of just reaching out and fucking touching her. <laughs> Most people don't have the common decency or respect or common sense to fucking ask. If it was a dog, they'd Danger just fucking touch her. Can I pet it? <laughs> if it yeah. was a dog, if it was a dog, they'd straight up just touch it, even if it said danger. People well, do that. Do that with scout. Do what? They used to do that with scout. <laughs> Warning, dog. You know, beware of dog. Oh, he's so cute. I'm gonna touch him now. <laughs> scout would look the other way before biting you. Right, like go ahead, do it. I'm not even looking. Stick your hand in the window. <laughs> that was oh, his little shit. game. Oh shit! So, and that's the DV minute. That's the DV minute. So that's two minutes. All right. So, you talk. Okay. Uh, since you're going to give me the rest of your time. All right. So, yes, as you heard before Barracks talk, we had the Marquee Dirty 30 return. It started at 2000, 8 p.m. Reclaiming Eastern my time. time. <laughs> 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 and, and speak of the chocolatey sexually goodness, what you up to there, Marquee? Hey, everybody. You want to give everybody an... You want to give uh, those that didn't get to hear your show an update on where you've been and how you returned oh, yeah. tonight? <clears throat> okay, everybody. So recently we moved, my family moved, all five children and my wife and I. We moved to a nice five bedroom house with an unfinished basement and plenty of land. It's a nice house. Wait, wait. Um, I, I wanna I wanna clarify. I did loan Marquis some of my white privilege. Yes, and it, it worked. You know, those three extra um credit points worked. <laughs> so three white credit points is equal to about fifteen black credit points, so it worked. We got the house, and, um, <laughs> but yeah, and so it took me a minute to get all of my uh, equipment set up. You know, it's not much, but still, it's, I had to get it set up, uh, internet, things of that nature. And um, so I've decided to put together a show. I'm going to be doing it every week, maybe more than one show, depending on how Bo feels about it. But I don't care because there's a lot of stuff going on, and I have to talk about it. You all want my opinion, and I have a lot of opinions, so I'm going to give it to you, whether you want it or not. So... <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice. You know, I just can't get in a car and ride around the country to Colorado and, you know, Timbuktu or wherever the hell you're going six. I wish. Oh, that's a dig at me. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys can hear the kids in the background, that's what I have to deal with. Oh, so they're back there getting ready for preseason football? Probably. Or basketball. You know, we are black. <laughs> you are black. <laughs> Oh, damn. Shit. Fuck. Did and, you and actually think that I was going to hold back on no. any joke that comes to my head? No, but <laughs> it, it's it's even better because Oink said the famous words, we've missed our co color commentator. And I was like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah we it. We've needed that here. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's honestly great to have you back. We fucking missed the hell out of you. I listened to your show, obviously, before it aired, and I loved it. Uh, you hit a 
lot of fucking points that need to be hit on uh, that aren't being talked about, which I think we could go in a little more depth on the other side of the break here in about six minutes. But yeah, I, I'm glad to have your ass back. Oh man, I'm happy to be back. You know, I, I, I keep getting messages from Snafu and other people and Lamborghini diaper bag is back on the air and we're going to have fun. I need you guys to go ahead and email me, message me or whatever. Let me know what you want to hear my opinion on or what you want to hear me talk about. Cause remember my show is focused on the newsy aspect of life. You know, cause we tend to try to avoid it, but forget all of that. Someone needs to talk about it. And, and, and PTS dog is too busy writing books about dogs and training stuff that so he don't want to talk about it. Oink is talking about pigs and pig style or whatever, because he's a pig. And, 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 and Frosty is a snowman and six is always driving somewhere. So I'll talk about it. I'm the only one here without a code name other than Lamborghini diaper bag. So you can find oh me my on God. Lamborghini diaper bag. I forgot about you. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I really, I really want you guys to interact with every aspect of the Marquee Dirty 30, Barracks Talk, DV Radio. Just get in there. Just give us what you got, and that way I can give it back to you. Watch what oh, you he'll ask. Give it to you. Watch All what three you wish for it. there. He'll give it to you three times. <laughs> Watch what you wish for there, Marquee. Some of these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know how to ignore people, and I have. Okay. <laughs> I got five kids. I don't have to answer you. You're not going to beat me up. And if you do, I'm going to call the police. One of the reasons I stopped commenting on anyone's post on Facebook is because of the douchebag on, on Marquis' Facebook. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Like, I, I had to. Like, You know what's funny? I haven't <laughs> been as controversial on my Facebook page as often because I, I'm, I'm getting so sick and tired of people trying to debate me on things they know nothing about or even you not even Wikipedia searching it. Just stop telling me what you think and tell me what you've researched if we're having a discussion. Now, if it's just an opinion-based forum, then give me your opinion. But if I'm talking facts, give me facts. Don't give me bullshit. What What are they doing? I'll be back. <laughs> Daddy, can I have a glass of water? <laughs> we might give you all the context of that one day. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's great to have Marquis back. Everybody's missed him. We've missed him here uh, on Barrett's Talk. I know all of you have missed him. So hopefully we can get back in the swing of things and have him uh, his show up on the air every Saturday at 2000, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It might run half an hour. It might run up until uh, Profile America airs uh, at not, uh, 8.50 before Barrett's Talk. But either way, you will hopefully have a brand new show every Saturday unless you know he has to take him to a basketball game or something. <laughs> but I'll let you guys know if I'm not going to have a show. Okay? I'll let you know. You going to let us know? Positive. He's over there stuffing his face with fucking pork chops. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I can't <laughs> wait, so I'm hungry. I got to eat the pork chop. Like every two seconds. Whoop. I'll let you guys know. Okay? Okay. <laughs> his mouth is so big, he puts it into his cheek like a chipmunk and continues talking. You can't tell. You know what's funny? <laughs> Is that I do do that, and my <laughs> my and my son does it as well. My wife is like, he's just like you. I can't stand it. I say, well, you know, I'm sorry. You know, he comes from these loins, so he's straight. <laughs> I do the same thing if I'm talking and I need to talk with my mouth full. I'll put it in my cheek, continue eating and talking all at the same time. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um. As I mentioned when I introduced everyone, Google and uh, Recoil are not here. Uh. Google is not feeling well. I don't know if DB6 wants to elaborate on that, but Recoil has some family obligations, but hopefully he'll be on next week. If not, it's Recoil. We still love him. Okay? We all love Recoil. All right? <laughs> you okay, Six? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sound like he was rubbing one off. I don't know. Don't interrupt him, man. Well, he's... He needs to get in the, in the spirit of things. Yeah, so my time is over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't it. push it. You, you remind me, I should just take it easy and, and, and get some sleep, you know, because I got a full day tomorrow. So, look, seriously, you, PTS Dog is coming up here tomorrow? Yep. Fuck. All right. 
Do you know what time? Yep. Okay. I'll tell you during the break. How's that? Well, I won't be here for the break. No, you won't be here for the break. That's why we have radios. Oh, right, right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Say again, over. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Kick. <laughs> Echo, 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 echo. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. We got to pay some bills. We'll be back on the other side of the break. We'll tell you some more that's going on here at ddradio.net, and uh, we'll go into a little more depth on what the Marquee Dirty 30 was about. You're listening to Barrick Sock right here on dbradio.net. DB Radio. And the next episode of Media Letter Sandwich. Someone actually taught me into like going to like one of the more extreme yoga studios, which mm-hmm. I will never go to again. So I went in there and the guy was like, oh yeah, just try it, just try to go in this move, try going here, going here. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, I popped something in my hamstring. <gasps> oh! All for two months. Basically, that extreme yoga was, wor- was more taxing to my body than picking up 500 pounds on a deadlift. Wow. Do 500 pounds on a deadlift, but extreme yoga, out, tap out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my body was telling me. Some people... DV Radio is a place where veterans can be veterans live on pre-recorded shows and via podcast free of charge for listeners. Although the laughs and music are free for you, it does cost us. Help ensure that veterans' voices are heard uncensored by sponsoring DV Radio. Check out DV Radio LLC at patreon.com slash DV Radio or by clicking on the Patreon button at dvradio.net. Find out more about sponsoring an individual program by emailing info at dvradio.net. Help ensure that veterans' voices continue to be heard. You're listening to Barrett's Talk on DayDayRadio.net. That's right. You're listening to DayDayRadio.net. Uh, we're back to Barrett's Talk. And you heard in the break, Media Litter Sandwich, which airs every week. Every Tuesday at 1900, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This week, in the Media Litter Sandwich, is nerd slash bodybuilder William Bowen. William is also a social media creator on YouTube and Instagram featuring nerdy reviews of video games and footage of him training and competing in bodybuilding shows. On this episode, hear how these worlds mix, along with tips on... See, see, I can't do this, Toad. I can't do this, man. You gotta learn to type, bro. <laughs> he, he literally wrote with tips on and tricks on. Like, dude, you only need one, and it's after the end. Come on, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> but anyway, on this episode here, how these worlds mix along with tips and tricks on these and other topics on Media Litter Sandwich. And again, Media Litter Sandwich is every Tuesday at 1900, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on dbradio.net. It airs first here, then it's on podcast, and you can speak with Toden in the chat room right here along with him uh, during the uh, the airing of the show. Uh, following that, it, or well, prior to that, a Security Sucks podcast. I've not, got a, uh, not been able to talk to Joel this week, so I don't know about the show that's upcoming uh, this Monday, but it is at 1700, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want uncensored, straight-to-the-point conversations with those in the security contract and business, from veterans to, uh, to civilians, Find out what it takes to be contracted security personnel and much more on Security Sucks podcast every Monday, 1700, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, the Up in Arms podcast is still on hiatus. Uh, as soon as I talk to Mr. Danny Mac over there, uh, we'll figure out when to uh, start airing their uh, shows as they make a return right here on DVRadio.net. Uh, their show will be, uh, as usual, Thursdays at 2008 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you also heard about Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash dvradio and join a tier that fits your financial budget if you're able to do so. From $1 in the found some pennies uh, tier where it gets you access to pretty much all the posts except for uh, certain tiers uh, and video footage and behind the scenes of my room to uh, Grandma Sant Money. At ten dollars, um, five pounds of darkness, which gets you fifteen percent off of Battlegrounds uh, blend from uh, Ubora Coffee off of the uh, 
the uh, five pound bag. That gets you 15% off on the five pounds of darkness tier over on Patreon. And then we have some other stuff for uh, businesses as you get higher. Um, go over there. If you're able to afford it, become a Patreon. All the proceeds through Patreon go back into DV Radio for music, website, editing, equipment, all that shiz and is. And we even take uh, polls and stuff like that and get your input over there. Uh, speaking of Patreon, if you're a Patreon member at the lowest tier, which is $1, when we begin the music therapy block upcoming as soon as I get over in my room, you will be the first ones to request songs if our artists uh, will do song requests, obviously. Um, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, according on who's there and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to try our damnedest to have a video feed. Um, if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we're going to try as much as possible to make it uh, sociably and... Uh, all that jizzy, jazzy stuff, interactive and, and whatnot. We're going to see if the artists and or bands will uh, stay after for the Patreon members to do a little more in-depth um, Q&A and, and stuff like that. So if you're a Patreon member, if you're a patron on patreon.com forward slash DV Radio at the lowest tier, you will be a part of the music therapy uh, before everybody else. But... With that said, music therapy is free to everybody outside of the music request and the extra uh, perks that you get being a patron. All right, so don't think you have to pay to play. All right, you don't have to pay to play. All right, we uh, we just want to reward those that are able to give to us and, and stuff like that. But we do appreciate everyone's support and uh, sharing of the podcast, the website the live and uh, pre-recorded airings of the show. We have a lot of shit going on. We've got a few guests that we're trying to get into the mix. Uh, working around their personal schedules as well as work schedules is a nightmare, especially during the summer. Um, the worst times of the year is between January and March, all of summer, and right around November to, again, March, April, somewhere in there. Um, so... Give us some time. We will have Betsy Ross, Hard Luck Automotive Mechanics. Um, Sailor Jerry will be on Barracks Talk as well as Music Therapy. And we've got some others lined up coming down the pipeline. So hopefully we can get all those on here in a reasonable amount of time. But uh, if not, we're sorry, but we are trying to get them in as soon as possible. Now, on to bigger, better things. As we mentioned in the first part of the show, Marquis Dirty 30 has returned. It is airing every Saturday at 2008 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll run anywhere from a half hour all the way up until Profile America begins at 8.50. Uh, Mark, he touches on everything. I mean, you name it, he's probably touched on it and he will touch on it. But if you have something that you want to debate, head over to his Facebook, Twitter, email him, anything like that. But, Mark, he, you did touch on some stuff tonight uh, on your show that I think has been left out of the limelight, especially the past couple of weeks uh, since uh, the Epstein suicide had occurred, and we use suicide in air quotes because no one really fucking knows. Uh, but what is the biggest thing that you brought up that me and you actually agreed on uh, when we talked uh, just the other day uh, through Zoom and we were fixing to bring your show back? Well, one of the things that I believe that we are missing in this whole Jeffrey Epstein thingy uh, is the fact that he had, what, 37, 38 girls that he was using on his pedophile island? That we you know, know of. We are, yeah, we're, we're overlooking that fact to try to say, oh, well, you know, he committed suicide or someone killed him. Okay, cool. Have we found these young ladies yet? Have we focused on them yet? You know, have we looked to see who was in his island, who went to his island, and let's prosecute them for, you know, pedophilia? But no, right now we're more concerned with the guy who hung himself and trying to figure out who killed him and what conspiracy theory we can throw around with it instead of actually looking for the girls, you know. And even if the girls have been found, are we taking care of them to make sure that it doesn't happen again? I read a statistic that like 25 or 26 girls just in the city of uh, Atlanta a day goes missing, you know, and I have yeah. two daughters. That's shocking to me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, st the statistics are astronomical nowadays. I mean, it used to be, even even for the time, it was 
ridiculous the amount of people that would be kidnapped or, or sex trafficked or whatever, and not just in the states, abroad, Canada, Mexico, uh, mm-hmm. Brazil, Puerto Rico, fucking England for fuck's sake, England of all places. But, so right now, I'm looking at every forty seconds, a child goes missing somewhere in the United States, and 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 that's ridiculous, you know. Um, also, during the show, we talked about um, what else did I talk about? Epstein, mass and then shootings. I talked about the impact of mass shootings. Yes, ma- oh my goodness, mass shootings! How could I forget about that? You know, um, <laughs> I'm 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 not in favor of any type of gun control. You understand what I'm saying? Like I am pro constitution all the way. I don't even the stuff that contradicts itself. I don't care. I love the constitution. It's the greatest piece of paper and literature on the whole entire planet. So I'm pro constitution, but I do believe we can have some form of extensive backgrounds checks or, or a mental eval that is required prior to purchasing a semi automatic weapon. But I mean, either way it goes, criminals are going to find what they want to find and do what they want to do. So there's no way we can actually stop it. That's like the meme I put up that said, uh, you know, the, the war on drugs really did help stop the war, the, you know, the drug use in the United States. So yeah. if we ban guns, that should stop people <laughs> doing mass shooting. Well, it's every, everybody brings up gun laws and, and how, you know, this done that and this law helped that. Well, look at prohibition. Prohibition was one of the worst times in American history as far as making laws. And the only reason is people fought and killed one another over fucking alcohol. A fucking inebriated fucking drink. That's it. And Maybe you, we should do it for marijuana. Right? Now, <laughs> now, when we done the whole drug thing, it slowly progressed because it wasn't something that was already legal. Now, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, Bo. I want to say something highly controversial. Yep. But I'm going to say it. The war on drugs, I'm going to say it, people, yeah. was used to target black people. I oh. said it. Oh, mo- I most, said it. Most definitely. Most fucking definitely. 100%. 100 fucking because percent. Because cocaine and crack was being used in the hills of Beverly Hills and Hollywood and Manhattan, but you didn't see any drug raids or cops episodes of people getting busted there. Nope. Well, you not only like that, episodes, black folks getting t- okay. I'm done. Well, I'm well, done. not not only that, <laughs> not only that. It has actually been proven that in very small quantities, uncut cocaine is of some medicinal use. That's very small quantities, uncut, very very fucking limited medicinal uses. However, when people found out what you could do with it if you done certain things with it, it became what it is today. And hey, then, if you guys want to come get your medicinal cocaine, I got a number. It'll be on my face. <laughs> right. But what they were targeting with the whole drug war was marijuana. Um, me and Marky has talked about this in an extent. But um, they had the whole reefer madness thing. The first thing you see in that video is how you will be like a black person. That's the biggest thing they push into that. Like, I'm telling you, it's just so sad. I, I know. I'm. I, I know. It's so sad yeah, that yeah. most things in this world reverts back to racism and race. It's sad, but it's true. You know, back in the day, a lot of things reverted to race. Oh, if you smoke that devil lettuce, you're gonna be having sex with a black man <laughs> and enjoying the time of your life. You know, but <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. Uh, going back to the law thing, um, you know, prohibition was stopping the legalization on uh, and banning alcohol. Well, we see where what happened there. We had to re legalize it. Then drugs, it didn't really turn into what the fucking prohibition did. It gradually turned into what it is now. However, gun laws make banning them oh my God, what the fuck? Banning guns that are already legal is gonna be a fucking reoccurrence of prohibition. I guarantee fucking see it. If we ban guns, we'll see. We will see prohibition all over again. You know, you know what's funny though. I'm reading the chat, and, and then DV Tree says money, and I, you know what? It, it clicks something in my in my head. Look at pharmaceutical companies. Okay, mm-hmm. we all know that narcotics are addictive, but yep. yet and still, they are prescribing them left and right. And we have a narcotics issue in this country that is way more crazy and way more dangerous than the cocaine epidemic ever was. And, and, and right now it's on par with the meth epidemic. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm -hmm. So we got these pharmaceutical companies who are in the pockets of the lawmakers who will make no laws against them at all. They'll just say it at these big rallies or when it's time for them to have their, um, you know, uh, reelection that, oh, man, you know, oh, uh, we cannot have narcotics in our neighborhood. You know, it's just bad. We should have them, you know, this, that and the other. But yet still, they will make no laws against these pharmaceutical companies putting out products that have side effects that is worse than the actual disease. Yeah, I, and I've I've been the fucking brunt of some of those goddamn side effects that literally almost killed me. <laughs> when death is a side effect, I don't yeah. want to take it. Just, just let the disease run <laughs> rampant. Yeah, well, it's like they keep trying to push biologics on me, and I'm like, look, Humira had me in the fucking emergency room every two fucking weeks. You want me to put Remicade in my body after what Humira did? No, go fuck yourselves. That's exactly what I told them. I was like, no, fuck yourselves. Humira what? Humira is the first one that landed me in the hospital. Now they want me to try Remicade, which is so much better, but it's basically the same side effects as Humira, except it's done intravenously. Can we sell that? If you really want to. Do you have any extra? No. (laughs) I've never taken it. I will not take it. I refuse to take it. That's one drug I will refuse to take, hands down. But I never passed by a good drug. Well, I don't know if you've seen the post I made not too long ago. Eight injections of Humira was 26800 and some bucks. Eight injections. You know, That's oh eight my. doses. That's a brand mm. new fucking car. Yep, That's a down yes, payment on a house. Overdo- Someone that overdoses on heroin, you can give them free Narcan all day long. And, I, and I'm for that to an extent. To an extent, to, I'm to for an that. To an extent, yes. I mean, but at, at the same time, why are you increasing, you know, people that are on diabetes drugs, you know, the insulin, up 700 or 400% to like $700 a dose? Exactly. I mean, well, you look at it, Narcan, you, you're giving free Narcan to people to overdose. And you're basically saying, okay, overdose and we'll give you free Narcan. And it reminds me of, okay, let's legalize all illegal immigrants. But we're going to stop the next illegal immigrants. No, you just gave the illegal immigrants a fucking incentive to enter, enter the fucking country, you fucking dickhead. That's the dumbest fucking solution I've heard all fucking week. And it was someone that I'm friends with, and I don't comment on people's posts anymore, as Marquis knows. But, really? <laughs> but yeah, um, you, you, were, you and I brought up what everybody latches onto now, Mark, Marquis, with, as soon as we see something, you know, we have to target it. It's either racist or sexist or genderist or fucking colorist yeah, to, or foodist or. <laughs> we have to classify everything so that we can feel comfortable with it. You understand what I'm saying? But then next week, something's going to happen and then we're going to completely forget about it. Let's think about the Orlando shootings. When that happened, we were all pro gay. Everybody was changing their Facebook pages to, to their, their Facebook profile pics to flag, you know, the, the rainbow flag and I support LGBTQ. And then the next week, something else happened. We just completely was like, fuck the gays. Let's move on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what like I love this. about like when President Trump or any politician says thoughts and prayers or go out to such and such at mass shooting or whatever fucking horrible event just happened. And everybody's like, oh, so you can give thoughts and prayers, but you can't go see him. All the while, they're fucking changing their profile pic to, like Marky said, or they're the ones pushing, oh, my thoughts and prayers go up. What is thoughts and prayers going to do at the end of the day for anybody, first of all? Second of all, it sure as hell didn't stop the bullets or the bomb. or And and what kills me is they get pissy with people that say that that's a politician. What do you want the politician to do? What do you want them to say? Like, Bro, if they said nothing, understand. but but Bro, if they said understand. nothing, if they said nothing, that the their asses would be rammed. Go out go into the universe, and they come back down <laughs> as rays of sunshine, and they open up under the clouds. And hey, Marky, huh? when you come up, when you come up to the house, I'll get the forty-five out. You stand in front of me. You say a prayer to God. And let me see if that bullet stops. <laughs> no, 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 no. You understand? You misunderstand. Um, thoughts and prayers work actively after the event oh, yeah. happens. No, yeah, you can't noticed. stop anything with thoughts and prayers. You can only make it better after the thing has happened <laughs> with thoughts and prayers. And this isn't coming from you know a biased opinion because I don't do religion. It's just I seen this when I was a kid and I was like, why are we praying after the fact? It's already happened. <laughs> but anyway, 
it's just we ha- like Marky said, we have to label everything. Everything has a label now. I mean, if uh, I don't get it, what what do you think about that, Oink Frosty? Why do we have to label everything? I, I seriously, I mean, I think social media plays a huge, huge fucking part in. Um, obviously, if you're labeled as a lay, you're LGBTQT, you know, you have a group now that you're associated with on social media. Before, I mean, if you think about when I was a kid, or when most of us were kids, we didn't have social medias. You yeah. hung out with friends, and you you care less for the most part. If somebody was gay, you could care less. If somebody was, you know, black or white, they were your friends. They were in your neighborhood. You played with them. But now, like you said, you know, everything has a label, and you can find that label or group or whatever you want to there on social media and, and join it. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start listening to some of the whacked out, either far left or far right, however you want to, you know, political-wise you want to look at it. You have to you have to agree with them or, or you're going to be kicked out of that group. Well, you don't want to be kicked out of that group, so... You have to agree. I mean, that's just kind of, like you said, uh, that's just my thoughts on it. You know, I think social media plays a huge part in it and, and pushing you one way or the other. And, and, you know, that whole peer pressure has gone from, you know, just people you know to people you don't even have a clue. You know, it could be a fake profile on social media and now you're listening to them. Right. What about you, Frosty? Uh, it's kind of the same thing as it's, Everybody feels like you got to be part of a group, and you don't want to get away from that group in any way, or so you just kind of go along anymore. Yeah, I mean, even medically, we have put a label on every little bitty thing. I mean, everything, everything has a fucking label. Like, when when does it end? When is enough enough? That's my next question. When is enough you know, enough? You know what, Snoggy Pie. In the chat, puts it Snicky. perfectly. The biggest victim wins. Snicky. I see two old Snoggy. Snoggy. I see Snicky. two old. It's, it's, it's Og. That's the O O Og. No, that would be S N O G I E. Yes. Snoggy. Snoggy. That's two O's. Snug. Yes. Og. Oh, oh my okay, God. Okay, whatever. Okay, we've getting on the point. Okay, so <laughs> the biggest victim wins. All right. So if, if we look at the shootings that happened down uh, at the school, remember what was that shooting? Which um, one? The one with the mem, the guy, the little, the the, the high school boy. Oh, Florida guy. Hates. Yeah, the yeah. Florida one. Yeah. Down in Florida. Okay, I'm sorry I can't keep up with all of these shootings. They just happen so fast. But um, his, you know, you see how he keeps trying to ride the wave of momentum from that. You know, he's playing the biggest victim of all right now. I understand your shoe got shot up, but it's a lot of people from the Columbine incident who you don't even hear of nowadays. Why? Because they were terrified. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're not playing the victim anymore. You are still playing victim. So now you have to be proactive and figure out a way that you can make your community more secure and safe so that it won't happen again. Let's start focusing on our community as opposed to trying to do the entire world a favor. Understand what I'm saying? Okay, we can't fix the entire United States. No, but we can fix our own individual communities by voting in good lawyer, uh, good mayors, good congressmen, good city council workers, good, you know, sheriffs. And fix our area, which will in turn make the other surrounding areas want to follow suit, right? Am I, am I just making up something here? No, well, know. well, to add on to what you, Frosty and Oink said, it's not just social media and it's not just the internet. Ever since Columbine happened, the media itself has been glorifying these fucking, um, horrible people. Let's, let's put it that way. I mean, Columbine started and it just went off the rails. Ever since Columbine, we have glorified these people. We really have. You can't say we haven't because as soon as it happens, their pictures is all over the fucking TV, every newspaper, their social media accounts, their whole fucking back history within hours of it happening. Mm-hmm. Within mm-hmm. fucking hours. And we talk about it for how long? Months and years even. We're we're still talking about Columbine. We're not still talking about stuff that happened in the 80s or, or 70s or 60s as far as shootings and stuff like that. And it, it happened then, but we're not talking about it. What what changed? What changed from before Columbine until Columbine to make us start glorifying that? We have a black president once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. 
Holy hell. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me get back on topic here. I apologize. Um, no, social media changed a lot of stuff. So now what we do is we try to search for clout. We try to do things to get likes. We try to do things to get more followers. Mm-hmm. You know, me, I don't care. Come to DV Marquee page if you want to. I might post on it or I might not for months. I don't care. Leave. It doesn't bother me. I don't know you in real life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, All right. that's the kind of, that's the kind of world we live in. We want, we want to be Instagram famous. We want to be Snapchat famous. We want Twitter followers. Oh, that, that makes us so happy that we have a million likes. And, and then one day you're going to slip up and throw a dog over your head. You saw the video of the girl throwing a dog over her head on Twitch. No. And your whole life is ruined. Yeah. I, she was some famous YouTuber or whatever. And she threw a damn dog that was in her, a cat. She threw a cat that ran oh, across the cat, cat, range. Yeah. She threw it over her head. And next thing you know, now she's not famous anymore. Well, now not only has- that, not only that, they were getting on Twitch's, uh, community standards bullshit because she has said a lot of racial slurs and stuff like that, and nothing has happened to her at all. But one black man says it, and he was literally suspended from Twitch for the rest of his life. I'm like... Okay, can I give you a quick story here? Yep, go ahead. My, my, one of, my friend, my best friend in the world, we play we play every game together on the Xbox because the Xbox is more superior to um the, the, the PC nogs, you idiot. And so we play Apex, right? And he's always t- uh, stre- streaming on Twitch and Mixer. And so he has this strict rule. You cannot say the N-word. I don't say the N-word personally because I find it to not roll off my tongue correctly. But his other <laughs> friends say it a lot. And they have been banned left and right for dropping in bombs, you know, just yep. dropping them and they'll bam, pow. But then we'll watch another person stream like on Facebook and they'll just be dropping the N word left and right, black, white, red all over. It doesn't matter the, 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 the color of the person, but they'll be saying it and won't be banned. They're like, what's going on? What's the difference here? Yep. Yep. It's that double standard. It's that fucking double standard. It's and always it's always a double standard. It it has yeah. killed society. It's it's gotten to the point it's killed society. I mean, fuck. There's so many ways we could take this conversation right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> oh man, you, you have like, no idea. If you look at look at the military. Yeah. Look at all of us who have served in the military. There's a huge double standard. Let's just go from the officer to enlisted side. Let's just look at it that way. You have a brand new lieutenant come in the army thinking that he outranks the first sergeant when you're like, dude, you need to go sit down somewhere guy and shut up you know what i'm saying yep okay and then you have uh this platoon sergeant who's been in the army for 30 plus years and is overweight and can't run a pt test but yet so they're kicking out this one guy for being late twice yep i mean it's just just like "Mm, okay let's pick and choose we got a guy who has the past height and weight but we got a guy here who's trying his hardest but because your policy is well if you're late to formation three times in a row you get an article 15 and then we automatically start chapter process what this guy is young he's 17 18 19 years old he needs guidance from the fat platoon sergeant which is not being given we've all been there yeah i know so many of us have been there i mean not oink because he was in the air force they just sat around and push we paper did. Day. We did. yeah <laughs> nothing special nobody ever got kicked out paper airplanes, airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> paper airplanes yeah, I mean, I, I've seen the same thing, too. I couldn't run because of my back when I was uh, in after AIT. Uh, but I, I did exercise. I'd done what I could with PT test, PT test and all that stuff. But there were some in there, I swear to God, they couldn't walk five feet without being out of breath. And there was nothing wrong with them except they were, they were fucking fat, lazy, overweight pieces of shit. And you're talking, like, like Marquis said, these guys have been in 30 fucking years and... Here you are working your damn ass off, trying to fucking push through, and here they are. <sighs> like, dude, did you have sex or did you just fucking roll off the bed? Like, which which one was it? Yeah, I used to love it when I used to take the time and be like calling out thirty two forty eight, forty two minutes. You still gonna pass forty five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I actually seen that happen. Uh, I think it was at Fort Lee. I think. Um, they, they were having a, uh, some kind of run. I don't think it was like a, you know, PT test or anything. I think it was just, just something stupid. And there was this one big motherfucker, man. 
I mean, he was tall, but he was way overweight for his size. Like, shit, man. I joke about me looking like the Stay Puff Park Marshmallow Man with, you know, glasses and a beard. But this mug, dude, he would have been the Goodyear Blint. Like, he he was that fucking big. And it took him, he was one of the last three to finish the two mile. And there was like 40 of them running. So if that tells you anything. And yeah, it, it, took, it took him about an hour. No joke. <laughs> like... He'd have done it, done it quicker if he'd rolled. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, these fucking I'm gonna labels. I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I was overweight my last, like, five years in the military. But every mm-hmm. time they did the height and weight, guess who was the training room NCO? Me. So I didn't write my own flag so they can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, granted, there are some that are overweight, and it's not their fault, you know. Uh, they're probably not able to do something, but there are some. There's nothing medically wrong with them whatsoever, and they are just lazy ass motherfuckers who don't give two shits. And it pisses me off. Like Marky said, you know, you got these young guys and women trying their hardest, and their career, civilian and military, are essentially over as soon as they get that first Article 15 that says you didn't pass height and weight, or you didn't pass your PT test because. You go to a civilian job and they see that shit, they're basically lady like, okay, so if you didn't pass this, or are you going to pass, you know, the simple lift a five pound box over your head and put it on a shelf kind of thing? Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, mass shootings. How did they impact us there, Marquis? Well, you got to understand that mass shootings then cause a frenzy for people. We either have people who are so pro gun or so anti-gun who want to do the most drastic thing possible and that's what kind of impacts us as a society because then you not have the pro-gun side who's like the second amendment or nothing else you know and i'm i'm, I'm kind of on that side mm-hmm. i do believe that there should be some regulations in place for a lot of things but you know we, we we don't need regulations for things that are naturally given to man which is like hunting fishing travel you shouldn't have license for that now i sound like a damn hotel um <laughs> but <laughs> Oh my god. If you all have never seen any of those sovereign citizen videos, I sound like one right now and I really oh, hate it, but Dude, we need to do a satire of that. We need to do like a sovereign D V or some shit. When I said travel, I knew it. I said, damn it, now I sound like a damn sovereign citizen. <laughs> but still <laughs> there are areas in our life that we don't need to be taxed on and things of that nature. But with gun control, this is an iffy line because the founding fathers put it very clearly that we do not have, I mean, that we have the right to bear arms. And, and, and that's, you know, we can't take that away. But what kind of arms should we have? That's the one that you got the, 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 the non pro gun control people are saying, well, they weren't really talking about these kind of weapons. They were talking about muskets. So we should all just only have muskets. And it's like, dude, you sound stupid. As technology evolves, so should man evolve, right? I, I don't know. I'm just saying shit well, now. I, I hate I hate to you know bring up the comparison again, but Marky, I don't know if you've noticed it or not. The same people that tout that the Constitution meant this in you know the late 1800s and shit like that are the same people that say, well, you can only do this, that, and the other in the Bible, and you're interpreting it wrong. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. That's what we have. You know what's funny is that I do a lot of research on. Um, the denominations of Christianity, just because I want to see why are there so many different denominations? Why do we have the African Methodist Episcopals, the Methodists, the, the, the Pentecostals, the, uh, 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 you know, all these other different sects of Christianity when it's just one Bible? Well, it's because people read it differently. And that's what people are doing right now with the Constitution. They're reading it differently when it's just right there in plain white and black, pen and paper. Why is it got to be white or black? Is, because that's the color. I mean, I'm sorry that the colors are white and black. <laughs> it's black and white and red all over. <laughs> you know, and Oink would have more insight on this because he's a constitutionalist uh, and he has read it a lot. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm totally in agreement. I mean, it, it's, it states it right there, you know, the rights should not be in French. But at the same time, you know, back in the day, it's, it's totally different from now. You know, back when they had the muskets, you didn't have AR-15s. You have to change with the times to a certain extent. Look at the intent of how it was written versus interpreting, you know, your own spin to it. Yeah. 
And, and again, you know, you can't pick and choose just to fit your narrative. You can't. It's, it's literally impossible. Unless you rewrite history and rewrite the things that you're picking and choosing, you can't pick and choose what something means at that moment in time just to make what you're saying sound good. It's literally impossible, even and though that's really, what we're doing. We only have these conversations when something drastic happens. Exactly. Frosty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We we need your two snowflakes in on this too. Oh, it's, I don't know. I think you guys have hit most of the points that I where I stand on a lot of it. It's the. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I've got a I got a fucking topic to beat down really quick because since we're talking about you know the Constitution and and rights and gun laws and stuff like that, and I know Marquis has thoughts both sides of this. What do you guys think about mandated voter IDs for citizens in America? I'm totally for it. And the reason I say that is for, you know, two reasons. One, it's already been proven that we actually had dead people voting at one time. It's already been shown that you you can get a driver's license being illegal in, in certain, you know, states. And that's all they need is photo or, you know, photo ID to go vote. Okay, Frosty, Marquis. I think it's uh, needed just to uh, keep track of who who actually votes and all of that. It's, I mean, up here, I mean, you basically go in with two two bills and to show that your name with your address and you're good to go. Okay, let's play devil's advocate here. Oh, this is so boring. Everybody agreeing with each other. Um, <laughs> how about this? Okay. So let's say if we, if we don't have photo IDs, right? Say it's somebody who's older or someone who can't make it down to the DMV or, or they're in an area where it's just so far out that they can't make it even to the, uh, polling place. So they have to use a, what do they call it? A, um, mail absentee. Uh, ab- yeah. Absentee ballot, right? Yeah. That's it. So mail in absentee ballot. Yeah. So if they're using those, how are they going to use a photo ID in order to get them? Well, you can't, they don't know how to scan it and upload it to a computer. So do we send someone out there? But then there might be voter fraud because that person might help them fill out the ballot. Well, my thoughts we- are, my thoughts are, well, it could be happening already with what you're saying, Marky, even though we did, if, even if we had photo ID, uh, it could be already happening. My thoughts on something like that is if you're able-bodied and going to a polling station, I think you should have some form of mandatory voter identification that can you they can scan and it shows basically everything from a naturalized citizen to being born in America, whatever, whatever the mandates are. And for those that are at home uh, unable to uh, get out and have to do an absentee ballot, I think to some extent you should either – Use a one-time only verification code that you have to fucking fill out that can only be used once or whatever. Something along those lines. Does that make sense whatsoever if I'm just fucking reaching out to left field right now? Oh, no, it makes sense. That's not even my my stance. I believe that we should have all types of uh, identification for a lot of things. Uh, it, it, what's funny is that, you know, when you vote, you know, even in Iraq, whoever was there for any Iraqi election, you know, you know. When it was time to vote, they get their little stupid thumbprints and they put down because that's their identification, right? Yeah. The thumbprint. So we know that that person voted so they don't come back in and vote again. Well, here in America, we have an issue where a lot of people uh, like 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 Snafu. I mean, like Oink said, not Snafu, like Oink said, <laughs> uh, dead people were voting. It's true. Um, I read a story the other day where here in Georgia, the um the um, um um for a certain county the board of education had no black people on it well then all of a sudden one year they had all black people on it and it comes to find out that the lady who was the voted the uh board of you know the, the secretary of education on for that county she um had a whole bunch of absentee ballots in her possession 
Yeah. Understand what I'm saying? It was a lot of voter fraud going on. And, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not justifying Democrat or Republican in this. I mean, this is not really a racial issue. It's a, just a, a, de- a Democratic issue. Well, I, 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 I want to touch on that really quick, Marquis, with you, because you are in the middle of the racial debate. I mean, you really are. When people say this is a racist thing, how do you feel about that? Do you see that as somewhat justifiable, at all justifiable, just complete okay. bullshit or maybe if this was 1953 or right. 1971 you understand what i'm saying oh this completely. is 2019 everyone should have an id even the people who are like 70 years old should be should should have an id because they were of age to go drive right. in the year 2000 to get a freaking id right right so my id right now goes into the year 2040 i have a 20 year id well, 21 year, what, 2040. Okay. That's yeah. the way it goes. So I got a 20 year ID. So I don't need it to get a new ID for a long time. So with that being said is that I'm still going to be me 20 years from now. The picture might not be the same, but it's me, you know, and well, in the state of Georgia, they have a new ID where there's a star on it, but my ID is legal. Well, what's so funny, today, even, even though it was the start of social media and, you know, the media did make a big thing about it. When passports got changed back after 9-11 to where they insert a chip in it now where basically you cannot, you know, make a fraudulent passport. Mm-hmm. No one had a problem with it. Not one fucking problem. I guarantee you, you do that today. That's either racism or some type of other bullshit that they're trying to push like they are with the voter ID. It's... You know- well, the funny thing is, if you watch it on Netflix, go ahead and just look at Border Patrol, which is the the New Zealand Customs and Border Security, you and Canada. Talk about Blake, and, and, yeah, just just watch it. If you think America's racism or profiling or whatever, yeah. <laughs> watch that show. Yeah, they're like, "Fuck you! You look like a dirtbag, oh. and oh, you smell like marijuana. Guess what? We're not letting you in because guess what? You're probably going to smoke it, and it's illegal here. So, get back on the fucking plane and get the hell out of our country." Oink, oink brought up something that that triggered something in my mind. Uh, the other day, uh, Stephen Crowder sat down and said, "You know, prove to me that Trump's not racist." Obviously, nobody fucking did. Um, one of the women on there was from somewhere, uh, I think the UK, if I'm not mistaken, and she was here, she, I think she's a naturalized citizen, don't quote me on that, but she is for Trump and, you know, closing down the border to illegal immigrants, and she said, you can see the change in criminal activities that happened in the UK when they opened up their borders, everything upticked, they didn't go down, things weren't, you know, kosher, things went up as far as criminal activity, the more they opened their borders and let anybody in that said they were you know wanting to seek asylum or blah 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 blah, the fucking criminal activities went and increased like tenfold it's fucking retarded and now they have all these problems in france and and shit like that and they can't stop it they can't they literally can't because you know their policemen don't carry fucking guns they carry billy clubs um (laughs) but that shows you we're sitting here saying, we should do open borders like the UK. Tell me how that's fucking working for them. Not so fucking well. We you know something that I just thought about. Is I that about a lot of things. The United States, with our foreign aid and foreign you know, policies, have ushered in this idea that we are so welcoming of everyone just to come here and live the American dream. This all started back during Harry Truman's freaking presidency when he gave mm-hmm. aid to Greece, you know, people started yeah. wanting to come to America more often. You know, they wanted to come here and start a new life because America has so much money. And that's what's happening with those immigrants from Honduras and down there in those, you know, in the Mexican border area. They're coming up in these caravans trying to seek American freedom because guess what? Oh, America gave our, our you know, some American came out here and gave us some, some t-shirts and some food, you know? And so let's just go to America because they have T-shirts and food. Like, no, stay home and use your free T-shirts and food. Don't come up here and, and, and bring whatever you got with you. you. Understand what I'm saying? You you didn't fill out the right paperwork. That's the problem. They don't understand that they have to fill out paperwork. Yep. So 
We've got about five minutes before we had to break. The point of what we just talked about, mass shootings affect everybody. Laws are stupid. They will cause nothing but more controversy. And yes, we need some type of voter identification. Before we go to break here in five minutes, how was everyone's fucking week? Marky, you've not been here in so fucking long. Please tell us how your week was uh, went. My week has been great right now. My wife is working a double, so it's been all jerk and turk time. So I'm just having a great week. Jerk and Turk time. I hear you. Frosty, what about you, brother? Another week. Nothing fancy happening. Same same old shit. So you're melting, melting, melting. We got you. Uh, Oink, how about you? Yep. <laughs> about the same. You know, it's it's been a, a great week for as far as weather-wise up here in Alaska. It's been semi-warm, uh, you know, mid-70s. So, you know, I can't complain. I hear you. Uh, a, a few of you have been asking how the update to my room is. Yes, uh, they completely finished my room. No, I'm not in it because JJ and Nevermore have all my shit. No, um, they have a few things. Uh, and they're also lending me some stuff until I can get some other stuff in there as far as, you know, little objects just to make my life a little bit easier. That being said, JJ, uh, if you don't know who I'm talking about, Joaquin Watai, PTS dog, is coming to my house tomorrow uh, at some time. I'm not telling you because I don't want you guys stalking him and coming to my house. But um, we will be putting up some stuff, and hopefully I might be in there tomorrow night, if not Monday at the latest. Um, but things are coming together. I do have some before footage to edit together for all the ones that are on Patreon. Uh, like I said, if you're on Patreon and you give at least a dollar, you will be able to see uh, the room progression as everything comes into fruition. Um, it's it's beautiful. Uh, I don't think I deserve that maculant of a fucking studio apartment, which it basically is. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I think I, you, got, you deserve a lot better, more than that, buddy. Trust uh, me. Eh, that's debatable. <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's beautiful. Um, thank all of you guys for keeping me fucking sane the past few years. Uh, but I do want you guys to be a part of it in some way, shape, or form. So, as I said, I am going to edit together uh, the before footage, uh, giving you guys a tour of what it looks like before we put everything in there. And then after we get basically everything situated with uh, the setup, uh, computers and, and TV and, and couch and, and stuff like that, uh, I will edit all of that together as a uh, another tour in of itself um, and let you guys look at that as well. Uh, it probably won't be completely finished when I do that, but you'll get to see what it looks like uh, for me to be able to live inside of, and I need to burp. Oh, excuse me. Dr. Pepper's working on me tonight. Um, Ben asked earlier if I was able to use my shower yet. Yes, actually, I did. And let me tell you, not having to climb over a fucking garden tub to take a shower is fucking beautiful on my back. <laughs> let me tell you. Um, I'm always in pain anyway, but I've grown to fucking deal with it unless I, I just have one of those really bad days and I've been having a lot more of them here lately because of all the stress and shit of getting all of this shit together for TV radio <laughs> and and shit like that uh, but that being said when I took my uh, shower the other day I think it was what Monday Tuesday like I told you I took it yeah it was Tuesday if I'm not mistaken yeah it was sometime Tuesday uh, around supper time I believe I could just tell the fucking difference, because usually after I take a shower, I'm out for about two hours. It beats me that fucking much. Uh, that day, even though I've not been sleeping, I only slept for like ten minutes after the shower. But um, but uh, I wasn't in as much pain. Obviously, the pain from moving and having to get around. But it was so much easier. Uh, it was easier on my mom. It was easier on me. So much I could say that I don't want to go into because you guys don't care. Um, but yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's so much easier as far as the shower right now. Um, I, I'll, I'll be able to do a little bit more as far as radio when I get over there completely. Um, and hopefully I can get a few people out here to record in the studio instead of having to do it via Zoom or, or, or you know, have them record and send me stuff. But... Uh, if you're wanting to know more, head over to patreon.com forward slash DV radio. You'll get updates on my room. Uh, you'll get to be able to do movie night, uh, which we're getting ready to schedule because we need everybody to pick a movie to watch and um, other stuff. 
So head over there. If you can afford it, do it. If not, don't worry about it. Just share it and let everybody know about it. We do need to take a break. We'll be back on the other side of uh, the break with junk that's in the news. And since Google's not here, we have all unanimously elected Mr. Uh, Frosty to uh, do the junk that's in the news. But you tuned into Barracks Talk Live right here on DB Radio. What's that? My my vote wasn't counted. Oh, that's yeah, right. You're not. Fine. That's right, you're not in our little chat. I gotta get you over there. Anyway, we'll be back on the other ID. side of the <laughs> You need a fucking ID. <laughs> we'll be back with John that's in the news. You're listening to Dead Air on D V radio. Go fuck yourselves, assholes. Before we go into the next uh, song, I just want to let everybody know we got a shit ton of new music on the server. So if you haven't heard it, uh, you might want to start listening to DVRadio.net during the day or night when you have nothing else to do. Anyway, back to the break. You are tuned into DV Radio. <laughs> and they no, call I'm... us dysfunctional. Ever shop online at smile.amazon.com? Why not give back to the DV Farm by making it your charity of choice? No extra fees or hidden costs, and a portion of your purchase goes directly towards the DV Farm, located in Gilson, New Hampshire, and helping to continue its mission. That's smile.amazon.com, and be sure DV Farm is your charity of choice. For more information about the DV Farm, please go to dvfarm.org. You big dummy! And now, it's time to find out what stupid junk is in the news. Well, I guess since I got voted to do this this week, uh, we'll start off this with one that's not quite so stupid. It's actually kind of cool. Um, our nation's first underwater veterans memorial opens to divers in Florida. Uh, they've created a memorial there located roughly 10 miles off the shore of uh, Clearwater and at a depth of 40 feet. They call it the Circle of Heroes Memorial. And it displays 12 life-size concrete statues representing the men and women from the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. I don't know about everybody else, but we're definitely investing in a fucking microphone that doesn't sound like fucking Frosty is inside of a goddamn metal tube. Any better? I don't know. You just said any better while you were moving the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll have to try for a different one here one of these days. That's a little uh, bit better. Not not a whole lot better. better, but a little bit. It doesn't sound like you're down inside of a metal tube. Okay. <laughs> well, if they'll be adding an additional statues in uh, another 12 more in 2020. And let's see. I'm trying to find where it said it. It was the brainchild of a Dr. Hayward Matthews. A professor of Oceanography at St. Petersburg College. And he's been working on this for 10 years now to honor service members and serve as a therapeutic dive site for disabled veterans suffering uh, from PTSD, depression, and trauma. Well, thank you, Dr. Matthews, for doing that. You know what? I like the idea, but did he think it out? Because it seems racist to me. Uh, how many black people do you know that are actually going to swim down there? Well, uh, you know, a black person did join the scuba diver team in the military. And what? Cuba Good Jr. What? And, and Cuba Good <laughs> Jr. did portray him. So, you know. <laughs> Jamaica, man. You got to be Jamaican if you want to get no, to no. the water. I, I saw the article. I read it. And I really do love it. It's like the way that they actually put the statues together, you know, molded them and sculpted, sculpt, sculpted them. Jesus Christ. Um, that is, ghetto is, lingo is coming in. Beautiful. I know, right? <laughs> it's beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. It, yeah, it feels is. a good it story really there. Is. Yep. Okay. Yeah, these are really nice looking statues. And I'll, uh, Slide the link over into chat for those of you to can take a look at. And then uh, our second story of the night comes from 
Snafu. Thank you, Snafu, for another interesting story from uh, Florida as well. This Florida deputies identify alleged burglar by cheese dip splattered on him and his vehicle. Sounds like a sex yeah. act going wrong. Yeah, this whole story is a, a mess here. It uh, says that uh, deputies responded to a home around 8 a.m. on and after receiving a call about a suspicious person being in the neighborhood. A woman told deputy, deputies that a man rang her doorbell asking for help with his vehicle while he claimed it was stuck in the mud. The woman believed that he was intoxicated and did not belong in the neighborhood. When a deputy came out to the scene and made contact with a 23-year-old Joseph Valderrama of Venice, noticing yellow stains on his shirt, as he was told him his vehicle got stuck in the woman's yard. At the same time, another man who lives nearby walked up to the deputy to tell him that someone had broken into his garage and tried to steal his 2018 Honda Fit from his garage. He, he was in a... What? Mm, there's so many things I want to say about this. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> Man told the deputies idea that had left his Honda unlocked with keys inside of the vehicle with both garage doors closed, though one of the doors was unlocked the night before. Deputies said they found the Honda parked and locked in the driveway with both garage doors open. A cheese dip had been strewn about the garage and on top of the car. The car's keys were found inside the refrigerator covered in cheese. Two bottles of wine were also missing from the refrigerator. One was found next to the Honda while the other was found half empty on the floor of the garage. Was also, this, an electrical <laughs> an was, electrical box had been ripped from the wall of the garage. A brown sunglass case that had been in the Honda was found on the on a cabinet in the garage. I was going to ask if this was spray cheese or actual cheese. From the picture, it looks like a can of like a jar of cheese dip just got splattered everywhere. <laughs> oh uh, God, I'm not. I'll leave, anyway. I'll let you all use your imagination <laughs> on where my fucking mind went with that one. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Deputies, when they spoke to Valderrama, who said that after being read his rights, he admitted to going into the garage. However, the deputies say he claimed he slipped and fell on the cheese and that he went into the Honda to turn off its dome light because it was on. He also told <laughs> deputies he had bought the bottle of wine found by the Honda in the, in the driveway and claimed he it fell out of his own vehicle. <laughs> he was arrested and charged with three felony counts, two for burglary and one for grand theft. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I'll let Marky have this one. <laughs> oh, no, you will not. <laughs> I don't even know where to go. You're with so this. close to the action there, Marky. <laughs> just, no, no, Mar just say it, Marky. Only a white boy. <laughs> yep. I, I, I have the guy. I got to see a picture of this guy. Uh, we'll add this one to chat as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the last or, or last news story for the night is kind of another shitty story kind of in the same theme as last week uh, this <laughs> one a fashion company ha comes up with pants made to look like it you had a poop accident <laughs> I'm muting my mic <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely don't understand fashion because from where I'm sitting I have an Accidental diarrhea explosion isn't considered the, the hot look for fall. A uh, fashion brand called ASOS that is getting mocked online for a new pair of women's plant pants they're selling. They Dude, that, like doesn't look, wear... that doesn't look like you shit your pants. That looks like you fucking had an explosion in the bathroom and it fucking ricocheted all over you. <laughs> I was thinking too. And made zebra stripes. <laughs> it's... Well, from the back view, which they, there is a link to the, in the article, uh, it does look like you shit yourself. Uh, Panther White have brown tie-dye bands on them, but one of the tie-dye sections happens to be right on the bottom of the butt. But hey, if you're interested, they're on sale, still on sale for $46. They call that tie-dye? Yeah, that's, that's where they messed up. They would have put an extra zero on there for $460. They'd be selling like fucking hotcakes. No kidding. It looks like they got a matching top to go with it, too. Yes, because boobies shit everywhere. What the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. they, call it, they call it public desire, relaxed joggers, and tie-dye cord. 
That's not relaxed. That's, oh, I need to shit. I can't make it to the fucking toilet. <laughs> it was folded okay. when you shit on it or something? <laughs> nah, it looks, it looks like all they had for fucking war paint was their shit, and they sm- smothered their fucking body all in it. Like, what the fuck, dude? This is just so stupid. <laughs> Right? It doesn't even look like shit. It just looks like somebody fucking took chocolate and spread it all over their clothes. What happened to people just wearing pants and what just happened? being comfortable in that? What What happened to fucking parachute pants? Well, they almost look like a pair of parachute pants. Nah, man. Those ain't parachute pants. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I guess... I got to click on a different angle here. Maybe on her <laughs> anorexic ass they are, but fuck, on a real person, no. <laughs> and she does, dude. She looks like she hasn't ate in, like, fucking two years. They photoshopped her ribs out. They, they fucking... Oh, I know they did. Because that's not her actual fucking skin. It's, <laughs> it's not, dude. You can... S- no. <laughs> oh, my God. Fucking model fucking photography, man. This is this is why I want to do my shit my own way, yo. Anyway, back to junk to the news. Well, you can wear <laughs> shitty pants. And that was all we had for tonight. We only had three stories. We did have a late submission. I was about to say yeah. Oink dropped you one more. I didn't get that one. Well, you need to look in the goddamn chat box, look motherfucker. Chat. Look at the chat. I was gonna say which chat box here. <laughs> The I one like I just filled moment. up with thumbs. <laughs> there we go. I see it here. $46 for this shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, like, I said, right? Like, I, like I said, Marquis, if they would charge 460 they'd be flying off the fucking shelf. It's People like, are re- buying into stupid shit. Remember Kanye West? He has a, 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 a clothing brand that he charges thousands of dollars for, and he looks like a homeless person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how, how can I be so creatively forward thinking. I don't I don't know. Uh, wow. <laughs> I should go outside and get some of those fucking pine bristles off of the pine tree and just put it over my penis and my butt and say, here you go, four thousand dollars. Buy this. <laughs> there you go. Sadly somebody probably look. already has. <laughs> or as uh pulls a cork and in, in chat put it, that's not cork couture, that's coutured. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some retarded fucking fashion statements. That right there beats it. Fucking Lady Gaga has more class than that. Oh, it's Australia. No fucking wonder. Alright. So I guess for our late submission... Youch. Uh, Asian woman (laughs) slips and accidentally has a cucumber slip inside her. Go on Pornhub. They have a lot of that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, a lot of accidents like that happen on Pornhub. Yes. Thank you, Ben. That That's your story. <laughs> <laughs> a woman in Thailand was forced to get emergency medical attention after urgently an, an ugly encounter with some produce. The 51-year-old went to get checked out after experiencing, experiencing vaginal pain because a cucumber had become stuck in her lady parts. When asked about how exactly that happened, her excuse was that she fell down in her house. In the exact <laughs> spot where the cucumber was, and it simply slipped inside her. I, uh, no. <laughs> Let's analyze this real quick. Okay, if there are children listening, please don't listen anymore, because I'm about to get a little graphic here, okay? Not too graphic, just a little bit, okay? So, so when a lady has a child, right, the vagina stretches about three miles wide. <laughs> and then the child no just shoots out. Okay, so a small cucumber, which is probably uh, let's say roughly eight inches, right? How have you seen? Stuck? Wait, wait, Marquis. Have you seen the size of some of these cucumbers lately? Well, you know, when I go to the uh, grocery store, I just whip it out and compare sizes with the cucumbers. <laughs> well, shit. If that's the case, I'm looking at fucking twelve foot cucumbers. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what's funny? I used to tell my soldiers all the time. I'm like, Sergeant Davis, man, you you getting fat, man? I said, I'm not fat. That's just my penis wrapped around my stomach 14 times and tucked in my socks. <laughs> <laughs> that used that used to be a joke in school. 
these girls that were fucking obsessed with me would say that I stuck my cock in my fucking shoe all the time. They were like, it's so long, he's got to stuff it in his <laughs> sock and his shoe. <clears throat> if anyone had to notice right now, we are men and we are um, comparing penis sizes. So that's what we do. <laughs> hey, my, my, <laughs> hey, I've already admitted, you know, I mix mine up with my thumbs. So. <laughs> But no, and then okay, let's let's go to another part here. The um, lady parts create their own lubricant. So how far was this stuck up her lady part? Because nothing can get past the cervix unless the cervix opens. That's just a little science there for you people. A little anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> the sad part is that you and I probably know more about the female anatomy than a lot of females in today's world. Oh, yeah. Some of these younger teenagers, I don't understand. How are you getting a tampon stuck in your vagina? It has a string. What did you do? <laughs> How? <laughs> oh. I'm done. I'm fucking done. Were you trying to touch your tonsils or something? I mean... <laughs> They're not teaching these kids anything nowadays. And parents are just failing them because we just stick the phone in front of their face and say, here, watch YouTube. Don't learn anything for real. I actually like, had a... Do they had, even teach sex ed in, in actual, you know, like in high school anymore? Because I mean, they don't teach driver's ed up here. Well, I actually had one of my family members, I guess you guys can figure out which one, ask me the difference between writing and printing. And I was like, are right. you fucking serious? Are, I'm are you done kidding with this me? Country. Right? I'm done with this country because our education system is failing everyone. Like, I can understand if you're a child just learning the terminology of writing, printing, and signing. Signing is you fucking write it in cursive. Writing is fucking cursive. And printing is fucking, let's make sure all the fucking numbers and letters are legible and look like a digital fucking clock. Like... Mm -hmm. What is so hard to grasp onto the concept of? <laughs> Writing versus printing. He actually asked me that, and I was like, I'm done. Damn, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Who right. goes to the hospital because I have a cucumber stuck up something? I mean, that's like if you have a hamster stuck up your ass. That's when you go to the hospital. A cucumber, you just smile Marky, it out. Marky, Marky. No! Marky, oh. Marky, you got to realize this is an Asian woman who's probably used to something a lot smaller than a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I'm God not is... I'm not you know trying to be funny, but it's been statistically proven. It's it's science. <laughs> well, hell, that could have been just fucking you know split pea fucking for that matter. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking her and her lesbian partner were either you know double dogging the, the, the double the dogging. Cucumber. Double dog in the, dog in the cucumber, and it just got stuck in one of them, and the other one didn't know how to get it out. Is that a new yoga pose, double dog? Yeah, the, the double dog. It's kind of like scissoring. <laughs> it's like scissoring with an attachment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why have we not talked about this Portland um like stuff going on up there? Because we got six more minutes to the end of the show. Or even Hong Kong. We haven't talked about those Asians yet. Because we've only got five and a half minutes left of the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, if you haven't already, go to Twitter at DV underscore DV Radio. Follow us there. I try to interact with you guys, and I sometimes start some bullshit controversy because I think it's fun. Um, no. As well as Facebook, uh, DV Radio Veteran Humor, Dysfunctional Veterans DV, the Dysfunctional Veterans Closed Group, which is only for veterans and military service members, not because your uncles, grandpas, sisters, aunts, husband, twice removed, was in fucking Vietnam. Um, we also have the DV Forum at dvbarracks.com, where you can get off of social media and away from all of those jerk-offs there. Uh, I'm not forgetting anything, I don't think. Go to smile.amazon.com, make DV Farm your charity of choice. A portion of your shopping cart goes directly to the DV Farm at no hidden cost or charges to you. Again, that's smile.amazon.com, make DV Farm your charity of choice. Um, DV6 mentioned something about mydvstore.com. Go check it out. I don't know what's going on. We are working on merchandise for DV Radio, and it'll be separate from my DV Store, so look forward to that in the very near future. 
Uh, again, patreon.com forward slash DB Radio. All of our sponsors, i.e. Nightcat Productions, we could not do this without you. And all of our Patreon supporters and donators uh, through PayPal, again, we could not do this without you. We could not have all the music and, and stuff. And hopefully we'll get back on track and start be able and be able to start making uh, equipment purchases uh, soon as soon as uh, we get some more sponsors on. Um, Marquis, since you've not been here in a minute, uh, last words for our listeners. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad you guys have come to listen to us tonight. Uh, be sure to tune into the Market 30 next week, where I'm going to be talking about something that's happening in the news right now. Remember, I talk new stuff because guess what? It affects all of us in some way, somehow. So let's keep it up. You can follow me at uh, Facebook at DV Marquee on Instagram at Marquee A. Davis one. If you old people don't know what Instagram is, it is a social media platform for you white people. Mostly black people use it, but don't worry about it. Uh, so that's that. <laughs> uh, Frosty yourself. Oh, well, thanks for listening to us. And if you're going to slip, watch out for your uh, cheese whiz and uh, produce. You don't want to get impaled. <laughs> And oink. How do you follow that? I mean, getting cheese whiz and stuff slammed up. I mean, never mind. Uh, <laughs> stay safe. Keep looking out for one another, fuckers. And we'll be here again next week. Make sure you keep updated on Facebook, DV Radio's Facebook, uh, Twitter, and on Patreon if you're a Patreon member over there. Uh, we'll try and update you guys as soon as possible on everything coming in the future. For Marquis Davis, who made his valiant return with the Dirty 30 prior to the show, Frosty, Oink, DV6, and Google, and Recoil, both of whom who were not able to make it. I'm Boner Wheel. You just heard Barrett's talk right here on WDBR, DVRadio.net. Until next week, Futsicles. Bye-bye! Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. We're clear. Oh, aren't you an idiot? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I try.